Hi, it's Georgia here with Cybercrime Magazine, and we took the Cybercrime Studios on the road again today. We're in New York City with founder and CEO of Fortinet, Mr. Ken Z. How are you today, Ken? Very good. Yes, thank you, Georgia, for, for the interview. Thank you for, for having us. We're excited to be here. Um, just wanted to get the audience to hear a little bit about you as a person, um, your background. For example, I read that you started out in the tech fields in a garage in Palo Alto, California. It sounds a lot like the way um, you know HP and Apple founders started up their companies. I mean, is that true? What can you tell us about that? Uh, yeah, it's a uh, cybersecurity or internet security in this space. Uh, I started in the college uh, back in Tsinghua University uh, in uh, China and uh, and then also in Stanford. Uh, so I started about five and a half years in Stanford. Uh, uh, supposed to finish a PhD, but I have a job off. Um, Decided started. to make some money instead. Uh, actually, uh, it's a uh, not in the early 90s, uh, the, the space growing so fast, so much opportunity, and uh, whether the distraction or attraction, so uh, made me start my own business. It's by accident. It's originally just helping some friend uh, set up the internet connection and uh, set up some security. But once I have a 20, 30 company set it up, uh, it's become a business. And they pay me monthly, it's a pretty good income. Then I end up just start my own company. Uh, and what was that company called? Was that the um, NetScreen? Uh, NetScreen is my second. Uh, okay. The first one called SIS. It's more like a, a secure infrastructure system. Okay. And then uh, uh, that company, uh, uh, did for about four years. Uh, we do have our own product, Firewall VPN, based on the software. Uh, it's a, I call the first generation network security, just secure the connection from outside, who can connect, go through the firewall, uh, how we can secure a, a connection using encryption technology, VPN. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, but that company uh, uh, doing well in the turn of making some money, uh, but did not quite scale up because we did not take the VC money. You didn't take the VC money. Uh, yeah, we uh, make some good money ourselves. Excellent. And, uh, good. And then, uh, but then I realized uh, that's the same time the other company, like uh, Checkpoint, some other company start at the same time, and mm -hmm. they take the VC money. They they grow very quickly. So I restart the company. It's a second company called NetScreen. Right, and NetScreen that became a very successful cybersecurity business. Um, so. From there, I, I hear you you sold that to Juniper Networks for four billion dollars. Yeah, that's a pretty yeah. uh, good uh, quick exit. Okay, and, uh, and now I mean, but now Fortinet is one of the largest security companies globally, with a market cap of more than thirteen billion. Is that correct? I mean, which what number are you globally now as far as cybersecurity companies? Yeah, we are one of the top three cybersecurity wow. company globally now, and. Uh, uh, so we start the Fortinet in 2000. Uh, so we try to solve the issue which the first generation firewall VPN cannot solve is how to secure inside the connection, how to secure the content application security. Because traditional firewall, you can control who can connect in, who cannot. More uh, like a perimeter. Yes, more parameter or more like you go to the airport, you have a ticket, you can board an airport. Mm -hmm. uh, but now but, you're saying things have changed yeah, Quite there's a, a lot of uh, malware, virus intrusion hiding inside the content, inside the application. Uh, so that's the traditional firewall cannot stop. Uh, so that's what we call the second generation is more application content security. So even you can connect inside, but because of most of the virus intrusion come from permitted connection, you actually need to check the content. More like uh, go to the airport, they need to check your luggage, you need to do the screening. Uh, so that's where we see what's the sense you carry, whether it's dangerous or not. Uh, so that's what we call the second generation. Uh, right. So the next generation firewall market. So uh, what if you were going to talk to a CEO of a company, what would a CEO need to know about this next generation firewall? Uh, next generation actually uh, uh, gave them additional visibility and also secure the application content. Uh, that's traditionally. Uh, the firewall VPN uh, cannot go inside the content, inside the application. Also, 
depend on the device and the user or location. Uh, so they gave all this mm -hmm. kind of uh, additional security. Uh, but that's doing quite well. So we are pioneered in the second generation, new generation. And uh, since that company 18 years ago, we grow very quickly, become the, the leader in the space. Uh, congratulations. So um, since you've been in cybersecurity for, for about 30 years, is that about Accurate about thirty years. What's yes. the biggest changes and challenges you have now that you've seen um, in the changing marketplace and the changing environment with the Internet of Things and connected devices in the cloud? Uh, you can see how Internet keeping growing and uh, how this uh, they call the digital transformation uh, keeping growing so quickly and. Uh, at the same time, uh, when you have all this data uh, starting uh, everywhere. Uh, whether in your traditional PC server or go to the mobile or go to the cloud uh, and then all these uh, application, all these uh, uh, different uh, uh, like uh, uh, vertical space, whether finance service uh, mm -hmm. or some other e-commerce leverage or internet, you can see uh, a lot of important valuable data starting floating around everywhere. So you need to secure all these uh, valuable data on all of these different internet connected devices. Exactly. Right. Uh, so that's where we actually start and realize. And not uh, just for a person, not mm -hmm. just for me. You know, I'm shopping on, um, you know, I use my Starbucks app at the airport to, to get a coupon and then I put my credit card information on my home computer. Or is that what we mean or how does this affect a business? Uh, actually, all this uh, internet connectivity add uh, quite a uh, uh, efficiency, productivity to the business side. Uh, okay. So you see a lot of a benefit of it. Now you can shop in online, you can do all these uh, finance transaction, right. you can do all the other, like uh, even healthcare related is remotely. Mm -hmm. uh, but they also add additional risk mm -hmm. because there's so much information data starting uh, no longer under your uh, kind of control. Well, uh, what about the interconnected, um, you know, critical infrastructure? in countries around the world, in America, for example, power grids or the, the threat of an attack. Yeah, exactly. A, yeah, the power grid, the infrastructure, or connect the car, and uh, uh, it's a lot of things starting connected. And uh, that's, that's come to the, the basic issue we face in uh, original internet not designed to, to fit current uh, most application today. And uh, that's where, how security come in to add additional uh, protection above the connection layer uh, for the application, for the content, for the user, for all this authentication, different device, IoT, cloud. Right. Uh, as we say, today you no longer can have this, uh, the traditional firewalls they call the trust zone and trust zone anymore uh, because the border disappearing now. Right. And uh, today, the majority of attack actually come from internal. Mm. That's quite changing from before you have a firewall, try to secure something from outside to connect in. But today, most of the breach come from inside, whether you have an infected device or some other uh, already get in from different way and then suddenly take some information data out. So that's where you cannot have this uh, trust environment anymore. You need mm -hmm. to have uh, the full infrastructure protection. Yeah, and I, wa I want to go back to that and talk to you about how Fortinet is you know, going with greater levels of integration and, and automation and security fabric. But before I we, we before we go there, we're talking about a huge complexity and expanding attack surface with IoT and cloud, right? And all of this is happening against a backdrop of the severe cybersecurity skills shortage that we've been talking about so much. Um, so I know that Fortinet is doing something really interesting with your um, your academy. Yes, that's what we call the the Network Secure Expert mm -hmm. Training Program. The uh, NSE program. Uh, NSE that? program. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is the biggest training program in the industry uh, so far. We have a trained, certified over one hundred fifty thousand people uh, wow. working with uh, over one hundred university academy uh, to all this training and. Uh, so you're uh, training not just people on your website and in your virtual classrooms, but you're also helping um, shape the curriculum at colleges and universities? Yeah, college, university, also the veteran and... Uh, and veterans. Uh, yeah, because there's a big shortage of uh, the, the expert needed in this space. 
uh, that's where uh, like uh, there's a like just a 2015 alone they have an additional one million people uh, get into this space and uh, going forward even more and more people uh, need to uh, uh, need to be trained for this space. I'm curious about the skills that the veterans bring to this. Oh, how are the how are the veterans unique if they've if they've been deployed or have worked in the um, the army or the navy or, or something of that nature? Uh, actually, the cybersecurity is quite interesting because a lot of new knowledge come up every year. So you don't need to have a lot of legacy training like all this. Uh, mass, physical, all these kinds of things. If you can learn it quick, uh, there's a lot of new technology, new application. You can quickly apply and uh, leverage that one to help in secure the separate infrastructure. So you have to be a fast learner. Fast learner. But you don't necessarily need a background in science, technology, engineering, math? Uh, or does that help? It will help, but, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's, uh, but for the cybersecurity, since it's growing so quick, and uh, there's so many, like you say, there's so many attack service you need to protect now. And there's so many application, uh, so many angle you can uh, help in security infrastructure. So that's making this a uh, huge need for the uh, security uh, uh, trained people uh, to, to get into the space. Well, how would you attract young, more young people to the space? Did I mean, we have a study um, that shows that fewer than half of all high school students in the United States have had a conversation with an adult in their lives. Um, I think it was a Raytheon study that, that said this. So this is a, you know, someone in high school, they've never talked about the internet, they've never talked about the cell phone with a guidance counselor, a teacher, a parent, or an adult in their lives. I mean, how are we gonna get them to be safer and more interested in, in cybersecurity? Uh, because cybersecurity, they, they touch everyone's life, right? So all kind of a lot of news and exciting, and um, uh, that's where uh, uh, the training need to be start from high school. And uh, they do have a lot of kids. They they love the space. Uh, they just need uh, the right uh, material, the right uh, trainer uh, to get them involved. That's what we're working with. Uh, quite a lot of uh, uh, academy, both from the college level, even the high school level. You are working with the high school level yes, as well. Yes, we do. Yeah, okay, we do have also the kids keeping hosting the the intern even in the high school level, and uh, mm -hmm. they can uh, take a look at the company. And if they love the space, and uh, we found out a lot of kids actually they learn it much faster uh, than. Um, uh, then, 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 like uh, even college graduate, all this kind of thing. And oh, also, yeah, and they're growing up with the internet and these devices connected to them. Yeah, so yeah, exactly. They probably more knowledgeable than me. In oh. this area. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Um, well, I think that's really interesting, and that's great that you guys are doing that. Um, so, what are you delivering through your security fabric platform to respond to these challenges? That we've been discussing. Uh, yeah, that's today. where we feel the space starting changing again with the the mobile device, um, with all the cloud, with all the IoT, and all different application. Uh, so now you need to find a way to secure the whole infrastructure because uh, no longer uh, uh, the the border whether it's a secure or trust and trust zones uh, been there anymore. So you really need to help and secure the whole infrastructure. That's also we we start this program we call the security fabric for the fabric program, uh, which is uh, involving all different part of infrastructure, like come from the Wi-Fi uh, for the mobile connection, and uh, you need to have a secure Wi-Fi instead of just a Wi-Fi and the secure as a separate infrastructure. Uh, the same thing for uh, the like the new SD1, SDN, uh, which wider will be the power for the 5G, the future generation of mobile connection there. Yes, we're all excited about 5G. Yeah, that will give you much faster connection at the same right. time we feel they need to build security inside. Right? Instead so of you're just, saying the faster connection might leave us more vulnerable. Yes, and also there's so many different ways to connect now. And, uh, and the same thing for the traditional network security, you also need to bring security inside the company to the segmentation. Uh, we call the uh, 40 switch, which also enable the security in the switch level, uh, which can isolate if there's some infected device, infected server there. You can quickly okay. isolate all this attack. All right, that's really interesting. So let me just throw you um, a, a random question here. I'm always curious what worries someone like yourself the most about cyber? Uh, what, what worries you the most? 
I think cyber, like I say, starting getting so many critical uh, application infrastructure become part of it, right? So that's where, and so many service you need to protect. Uh, Do we need to worry about our, our, our trains and our power grids and things like that? Uh, you, you do need to worry about and uh, make sure uh, you are aware there's uh, always security risk. And uh, if there's something happen, how to respond to it. Uh, that's where how to be prepared. So, I mean, what can you bring to the public sector or the government side from the private sector here? I mean, how, how much more should we be um, bridging that gap? Uh, that's where the partnership, right? The public-private partnership is very, very important. And also, Fortnite is one of the founding member founding uh, member of what we call the CTA, mm -hmm. uh, Cyber Threat Alliance, okay. uh, which is a uh, it's a, among all the top uh, player in the cybersecurity space uh, working together and also share the intelligent information with the government and also make sure uh, we have the best uh, information knowledge uh, we can protect all this critical infrastructure. Okay, that's really interesting. Yeah, thanks for sharing about that. Um, I wanted to talk to you quickly about um, bringing more diversity and inclusion to, to cybersecurity. Um, we've done a lot of interviews at Cybercrime Magazine uh, with women in this space who, uh, you know, women are still underrepresented in this space. Um, so what can we do to say that this is a, an industry for everybody, it affects everybody? Um, how can we diversify and, and strengthen the uh, cybersecurity community and, and job market? I think the cybersecurity is the the one of the best area, I think, for, for women because uh, there's a lot of new things to learn. And uh, I totally agree there is a kind of underrepresented right now. It's probably only 14, 15% of the cybersecurity uh, staff is more women right now. At but, Fortinet? Uh, not just the whole industry. And the whole industry? Yeah, Fortinet probably above that average. Mm -hmm. uh, but we totally agree. Uh, you look in the college level, probably there's more or more women than, mm -hmm. than men, but it's also in the cybersecurity, uh, the traditional thinking always is more like uh, involving quite some technology, some other things more difficult, but it actually is not. It's a lot of new things to learn more, more quickly. Mm -hmm. so if you can keep in learning, catch up the new trend, the new application, then you can be uh, the best in the cybersecurity space. Yeah, it's such an interesting space to go into as yeah. well. Very dynamic, fast changing learning space, and that's can fit for everyone. And it's a diverse space too. I mean, so many people who grew up in other countries founded top cybersecurity firms. Yes. Um, um, I mean, we've got um, CyberArk, the founder was from Israel. Yeah. Uh, Kaspersky Labs was Russia. Mm -hmm. um, FireEye was uh, the founder was from Pakistan. Yep. Um, AVG Technologies, the founder is from Czech Republic. Mm -hmm. So it's a diverse field too, which is I think a message that doesn't always get out there. Yeah, it's a separate security is a global issue, mm -hmm. right? So that's where all different part of what need to be working together, or also different background, different people need to working together. And at the same time, it's a very fast changing dynamic space. That's always uh, uh, get a new company or uh, like uh, uh, new people. Uh, so they don't have all this uh, uh, traditional uh, legacy or some other things uh, gave them an advantage. That's where the bigger companies sometimes even have a disadvantage play in the space. If they have too many uh, legacy since they need to uh, take care of it, then, then they're a little bit slow on the innovation. So that's where you're looking at this space, it's more of a fragmented space. Mm -hmm. And uh, so far the company most successful in the space is always uh, dedicated in the space and uh, quickly follow the change. And uh, if some bigger company more depend on acquisition or all these kind of things, they're, it's going to slow you down. Yes, yeah, slow them down mm -hmm. and also difficult to keep up the growth. Right. So that's where keep up the innovation and uh, keep learning and uh, adopt the change. Uh, that's very important to grow in this space. I just have one more question mm -hmm. before we uh, wrap it up. Please. So do you think the boardroom and C-suite type executives understand everything they need to do about cybercrime and threats their organizations face? Uh, they are uh, much better today uh, than like a few years ago. I uh, understand the importance of the cybersecurity, but I feel still not enough uh, because the 
impact and uh, whether the risk or the damage of cybersecurity is still much bigger uh, mm -hmm. compared they realize the and also can be huge impact to the business if they don't quite realize how important it is. And at the same time, there's a, a lot of uh, uh, new technology and uh, where to help in the digital transformation. Uh, that's where I feel the security need to be considered together with all this uh, uh, infrastructure and uh, last word, the CIO and the CSO need to be working together or one person or even for us, we just feel not only you need to help build security, you also need to build secure infrastructure together. So when you build a new infrastructure, new connection, whether the SD WAN or the 5G or the networking, uh, you need to consider security from the very beginning, build it together instead of uh, uh, take care after something happened. Very good. So when do you think we're all going to be on 5G on our phones? Uh, we'll be much faster. On average, maybe like. Uh, 50 to 100 times faster. And Do you think it's going to be 2018, 2019? Uh, that's hard to say, depend on, uh, but I do believe. It's going to be lightning speed. Yeah, it will be much lightning <laughs> speed. We'll also enable a lot of application you cannot quite uh, use imagine before, but also introduce a lot of risk. Uh, that's true. So that's the other part we also need to consider from the beginning. Uh, but it's, it's, that's all this uh, digital transformation because uh, more efficient and uh, and have a new uh, 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 the, the, the totally new uh, uh, digital economy uh, which is don't have that before and at the same time they also introduce the new risk. Very interesting. I really appreciate your time today, Ken. Ken Z, founder and CEO of the world's third largest cybersecurity company. Thank Ordinary. you. Happy to Amazing. be here. Thank it's you a great very program. Much. Thank you. Have a great day, and Thank we you. are good.